let's say you're in the apocalypse, and all that remains is a well-stocked IKEA and a real rager of a party coming up next month. What do you do? So if the title didn't clue you in already, we are going to be making lingonberry wine using only ingredients found in a family-friendly IKEA. So the main ingredient here is going to be Drick Lingen lingonberry concentrate, bottled in a 1 liter IKEA corkin bottle. At about $5 for the concentrate, and discounting the infinitely reusable glass bottle, it comes out to about $1.50 per bottle of wine. Which is not the cheapest you can make it, but come on, that's not bad. To make normal lingonberry juice with this concentrate, you dilute it one part concentrate to six parts water. However, the juice used to make wine is in fact a little stronger than uh, normal juice that you would drink from the store. So uh, to get it to a comparable sugar level, we are going to be adding straight up granulated sugar. Because while you could make it by uh, diluting the concentrate less, say uh, one part concentrate to three or four parts water, this stuff ain't exactly cheap while I am. So, now we're going to start with some slightly warm water and add it to our bottle. No need to be precise at this point, just fill it around halfway. And then for this recipe, we are going to be adding a half cup of sugar and two thirds a cup of lingonberry concentrate. If you didn't know, the amount of sugar that you add to a wine is very flexible, but also very important to how the wine turns out. If you have a low sugar wine, then it will turn out probably dry and low alcohol. If you have a lot of sugar and your yeast is cooperative and you leave it to ferment long enough, then you should have a nice dry high alcohol wine. And if you have a lot of sugar and you don't leave it to ferment quite long enough, then you will have a very sweet medium low alcohol content wine, which spoilers ahead is how this one turned out. Whether that's a good or a bad thing is more personal preference than anything. Now, I actually made this video a while back, but you can expect to see more weird wines and budget brews coming up in the near future. So, if you want to stick around, hit that like and subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. After adding all the sugar and the concentrate, we'll be wanting to fill it up with water, almost but not quite all the way up to the top. The final ingredient is some wine yeast. Pretty much any type will get the job done just fine. So if anyone actually watches this video, I expect there to be comments along the lines of Hey, you didn't just use things from Ikea. Clickbait! Clickbait! To which I say, yeah, kind of. Now, you could make it without sugar and double the amount of lingonberry concentrate, and you'd probably have a better wine, but showing the more cost-effective alternative seemed like a more educational route to take. As for the yeast, you can technically find yeast anywhere, so if you want authenticity, go ahead and dip a Swedish meatball sub in your wine or whatever, but I'll stick with the tried and true method. Anyway, if this is a survival lesson, it's more likely that Amazon would cause an apocalypse than go down in one, so I consider a dollar for yeast online fair game. You can see in this instance I used a mead yeast because that's what I happened to have on hand at the time, but uh, red wine yeast is easily accessible and will work just fine. Now this time I also made a yeast starter, and that was half and half apple juice and water heated up in the microwave for a few seconds. That's supposed to activate the yeast and give it a healthier fermentation. However, since then I've found it's not really necessary. It you spend some time doing it, it's supposed to make it better, but I really have had no problem with just pouring dry yeast in. So uh, to each their own, go for it if you feel like it has a benefit, but I haven't really found it to be necessary, so you can save yourself the trouble. What's more, one packet of yeast is good for like five gallons of wine, so if you're into these tiny brews just for experiments, 
then uh, you can do quite a few of them. And here I also added some to a spiced mead that I was working on. Similarly, just a tiny experimental batch. Now this was a while ago, so I don't remember if that happened to be the habanero pepper mead that I made, but if there's any interest in these brewing videos, then maybe I'll make another batch of that, because that stuff was something else. Anyway, after that there's only one step left. Put it away, and leave it alone for a couple months. So naturally, I failed that step, and opened it up after two weeks. I don't have the original commentary here, because the audio was terrible anyway, but basically I ended up making as much soda as wine. So it was fizzy, light, and sweet. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Some of the people who tried it really liked it, but when you're trying to make a wine and it comes out more of a Mike's Hard or a Linganarita, you know, it takes patience. But if you can have that patience, it's well worth the time. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments, and hope to see you next time.